This is the play session I look forward to the most, and also dread the most. <laughs> Each week. Oh. I gotta say, this uh, like Iron Man mode really cranks up the stress. Just because the stakes are so high. I mean, it's not undoable, but it's definitely a lot less comfortable than having a save point. You know, just having to, like, go back and reclaim the gear that you worked so hard to, to achieve... It, it adds a level of, like, yeah, it just adds stakes, man. It adds, it adds some, some pressure to the moments that are otherwise already pretty high pressure. All right, what are we rolling right now? We got the AUG, everything cleaned up. I'm sure I left it all immaculate. I tend to do that for myself. Do I need three of those? Oh, I've got four of them. Okay. Those two are staying. This one can stay here. That one can get used up. Ha ba 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 ba. Okay, if I remember correctly... Yep. So if I remember... Yes. Uh, all we're trying to do right now is complete the... <laughs> I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that one. I'm not doing that one. Um, data recovery? Wristwatch of a... Uh, did I not drop off the wristwatch? We're going there anyway. I might as well grab that one, I guess. Um, so yeah, all we're really trying to do is get one picture of a SWAT mimic, which is proving to be rather difficult since the SWAT mimics are, tend to be really good at killing us from a distance. Um, or, you know, they're, they're good at shooting us from a, from a distance far enough away that we can't really get a picture of them. So, you know, that's not an easy thing to accomplish. Uh, ha, 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 ha. But, we've got a whole lot of ammo. And let's go ahead and... How much time do we have on the clock? Let's find out here. Uh, one day 14. I kind of want to maximize my time here. So we're just going to go down into this area. We're going to clear it out again, try to get pictures of everything we can.
Hopefully the fact that it's nighttime won't be too much of a hindrance to us getting a good picture. Cool calls. Your weapons magazines can break too! The lower the condition, the higher the chance of a malfunction. Woo! here in water. That's a nice shot, they say. Well then... Oh. Alright, I'm gonna just go ahead and call that a win. Yeah, if I've got the shot, <laughs> I don't need to go in there. That is a big W. Been trying to get that photo for a long time. This is the most valuable camera I've ever carried because slider, BTR, SWAT mimic, I do not want to drop this camera right now. <laughs> Boom.
So now we should get... Twenty in Baloki. What? Oh, we'd have to go to three separate locations and three separate maps to finish that one. I was wondering why it was a two thousand dollar reward for just finding some heavy helixes, but that makes sense. I'd probably be crawling with sliders just to like make it that much more of a nightmare. Uh, okay. I thought I would get my good missions, but I guess not. Phantom. What's a phantom? Is there anything about... Oh, I would guess that's one of the invisible ones. Right? Phantoms, yeah. Yeah, those are the invisible ones. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't want to do another paparazzi mission, really. Uh, Warren's Legacy is down there. I can grab that one. I don't want to have to go all the way down to that spot just for a cleanup and then work my way all the way back. That's not, not great. I don't want it. Um... Wait, can I accept it and abandon it? Operation cleanup, let's do it. Let's try that. Nope, that didn't that didn't get rid of it. <clears throat> Alright, well we gotta get the wristwatch. We gotta get the thingy there. Tick, 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 tick. up slightly.
what's up rustic scuba uh scuba i'm gonna be on this for a while and then uh we're gonna play some like try to probably try to finish into the back rooms later so we'll be uh uh, my, my dance card's full today, unfortunately. But if you get into pop, have a great time, man. Yes, backpack weight includes everything, like everything you're carrying. So if you've got, um, if you've got a gun, it's everything. It's the gun with all the attachments. It's all of the you know, stuff in your pockets, it's your maximum carrying capacity, including armor. So, like, once you, um, once you get into, like, helmet and chest rig, um, those actually have quite a bit of weight to them. So, like, it almost reduces, like, you know, you're, you're trading off a little bit of safety for, um, the ability to like carry a bunch more back with you um that's another way that the game kind of like cranks up difficulty a little bit later on like yeah you're you're more safe but you're not going to be able to make as much money so um yeah all right well let's see here <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, you do not want to end up in Kolkos until you've got some serious firepower. Um, this map, avoid at all costs until it's absolutely necessary. The sliders alone are nightmarish to deal with. Um, and then, yeah, there are, like, armored seekers every, or armored, um, armored mimics and armored seekers in there as well, so, and the BTR that you can't kill, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's not, uh, not a walk in the park. Um, again, like, starting area, second area, third area, fourth area, try to at least make sure that you're, like, geared up better and better and better as you as you progress because um like if you don't have armor piercing when you get into pobita factory you're gonna you like you can't even fight the enemies that are in there and if you don't have something that's like you know fully automatic assault rifle um or at least you know like like the tiger rifle the semi-auto um that just hits like an absolute truck you're not going to do very well in that zone. All right, let's uh let's get back in there. So we got to get that wristwatch and we got to find the black box. Uh both of which are going to be rough but doable. I only have, like, a day and a half to do it. Yeah. So, dying at this point, like, it's better to just walk away and sleep it off if I feel like I'm getting in over my head than it would be to, like, push and get myself into a position where I have to go reclaim my body. Because it's, like... Reclaiming is a good uh, day's worth of mission on its own.
tinker. They just respawned, didn't they? Solves a lot of our problems right there. Let's see if the Enemies can't respawn, we can just take them out a lot slower. We don't have to feel like we have to push. Picking up an extra machete.
Oh, they found me. Alright. Well, that's not ideal. I suppose I should have just held the line. Oh, they're coming. <laughs> Tapa. This is probably going to be really bad. Hopefully that's somewhere near... I hopefully that's everybody that was up there, actually. Um, I wonder if this is supposed to be giant hogweed. That would be somewhat appropriate, I suppose, for the uh... stuff is gnarly. Thank <laughs> you. 
things are going to get a little tricky. Because I have to go out into the wide open where the BTR might be able to spot me.
to find a something up beyond the tree line out there. Hmm. So I'm like here. I mean, I gotta go out to the no man's land out there. Ghost dude spooked me. <laughs> oh, Twenty round VSS mag, sure. So it's got to be like right here, probably next to the truck, because that's the safe house. That is, I think, oh no, that's just a little shambler. We can work our way from pile of wheat to, or pile of hay to pile of hay. and it's probably at the truck. Come on over. there. Yep, that looks like a black box to me. Nah, I'm not gonna spend time on that. Let's get out of here before we're spotted by a BTR. on that one, I don't think great, no.
I was kind of hoping it would give me the Papers Drive Me Crazy mission early. The one for the flying house. The floating cabin. Because, like, I pretty much would need to clear out this area anyway. I guess not the whole area, just the, uh, just the spawn point, and then anything, and then, uh, all the snipers. Because if you, uh, if you have to deal with the snipers on this side, and the BTR, and the sliders out in the middle, like, it's just, it's just too much. So, like, this compound, you at least have to take out the things that can hit you from a, from a range. Because you're really exposed up in that little floating cabin. But I, even if I got it now, I don't think I'd, eh, I can't say that. How much time do I have until the reset? Uh, whole day? Uh, <laughs> I'd be very disinclined to try it, just because I know how risky it is. Yeah, I'd, I pretty much want to take that on with, like, at least two days to work it slowly and methodically. Tune up this AK before we sell it. Oh, am I out of oil? Wow. Alright, it's worth buying some oil for. Thank you. 
Alright, where is the spot? Come on. Come on, where is it? Where are you hiding it? Ooh, is there somewhere in there? Come on. Come on. I'm gonna give you a little spritz, spritz, spritz. No, that's all you wanted, just a little bit more oil. Okay. you gotta get for that. Uh, 750 for that AK. So that's not too bad. We spent 200 on the oil. We only used like a fifth of it. need one but you know what let's just go ahead and grab it because uh a thousand bucks but we'll use it maybe maybe not maybe not actually I'm gonna leave this one oh, wait let's top everything off
have for me? UMPSC Explorer 12, Log 13-6, Steps. The step artifact is similar in appearance to a semi-transparent rhombic hexacontrahedron. This artifact was recently discovered in a remote sector of the radius that had previously been off limits to UMPSC explorers. When the artifact is activated by squeezing, it causes you to leave a trail of visibly illuminated footsteps behind that stay visible for hours. I haven't yet found any step artifacts myself, but I heard about an explorer fooling around with one a while back. They ended up helping several chains that had been stranded for years to find their way back to UMPSC. Hmm. Let's take a look at Ouroboros Pachorus Castle. All right. We get to go to the castle now. Um, 75, 7500. Well, uh, how long do I, okay, that's what I was pulling this out for. We've got a day. It's not the final mission. It's not going to the center of the castle yet. Or at least I wouldn't think so. But, we can get this first one done, and then we'll have to re-clear uh, re this little area in order to get there again. I guess we aren't going to have to do the floating house, and I'm, uh, and I'm totally fine with that. just do not want to risk it with these electrical anomalies. They are, they hit too hard. up a lot. Hey, Katya. on this get a nice 
thumbnail image here, right? But yeah, the the haze over there and the like all of this construction like ripped up housing that wasn't here. It was just this little thing. made this their home for centuries. When we came here on a high school field trip, I thought I could still smell the open hearth. The wine, the suckling pig, the blood. Not much for lords to do and there's no war or political intrigue to amuse them. So blood kept flowing in their halls. They tortured and killed anyone who displeased them. To make an example of them or simply for entertainment. Then, castle fell into disrepair, and anyway, the times were changing. The rich and powerful built themselves new palaces. This place stood abandoned for centuries, though passers-by would sometimes squat amidst the ruins. Bandits, vagabonds, children without parents. A band of partisans stayed here briefly during World War II. They all died here. In the 50s, the Soviet government finally noticed the castle and turned it into a museum. And now, now this is all that's left. Can't smell the blood of past centuries anymore. Can't smell anything human. I wouldn't call myself religious, but maybe we're paying for the sins of the past. For all the sins of humankind. Tiger Mag. <laughs> okay, so we had what am I trying to do here? Oh, it does want me to go all the way to the middle. Okay. Well, I can't do that. Uh, because I don't have the time for it. But I will treat myself to whatever I can scavenge.
Ouch. That's a mag of some sort. close to the edge there. Oop! <laughs> Wait a minute. I threw a probe there. there was a box just on the opposite end of the bridge. So I wonder how the, how much they've like reconfigured the inside of this. Something horrible is about to happen. I have followed the events for a while and figured that the next incident will take place in the castle. I am absolutely sure it will. I'm going there tomorrow. There's no time to be scared, Katya. Or it'll be too late. quite happy right now because I know that we are very close to finishing and that means I can uh, complete and get these episodes all edited up ready for you guys to watch in uh, more condensed versions. And that gives me more time to play the break-in and <laughs> uh, all of the stuff I got in the Steam Summer Sale. Like, oh, there's so many games I want to play too. And this one, like, I love it. I love this game. I love this game, but it takes a while, and it really, like, ooh, it, 
like I get done with a I get done with a play session and I'm exhausted. Oh, that is a BTR. Please do not see me. Please do not see me. Oh, that's terrifying. <laughs> so... Do we want to get weird with our loadout for the castle? Okay, we've got 20k. <laughs> um, part of me is just like, you know what? Buy the, buy the FN-17, buy the SCAR, man. Like, do it. <laughs> Part of me is like, you know, this is, it's really not worth it. I've got the AUG. Um, I would take the Tiger Rifle, but given the close quarters combat of the castle, at least for that first part, going through the walls, like I might break it up into two sections. So I might go... Like, take the first air, like, go through all of the exterior walls first with the, um, AUG. But then, like, if I go, if I then come back out, I've got to go back in, like, I don't know, maybe I'll just do it with the AUG. never would have guessed that I'd have this much money going into the last area. my grip. That's kind of amazing. Yeah! Okay. So let's do this. We're gonna... to my goodies. Nope. <laughs> 
Did I have extra tiger mags somewhere? Just these ones. We're going to take all of our ammo in with us for the AUG. Wow, I'm, I'm still just I thought there was an extra, I thought there was like an exploratory mission, but I guess it was just because like I went in, um, I went in just to look at it. Because I just wanted to know what the castle was going to look like. Um, yeah. Oh, well, let's, uh, let's have a snooze. It's... Twenty one hours until roughly so My brain not braining so good. Uh, 15? Seventeen. Hold on, let me take off my shoes and socks so I can count on my fingers and toes. Uh, <laughs> Alright, so at 21 plus 21 will be... Uh, yeah, 17, 18, 17, I mean, I'll just sleep, if it's 18, then I can add an hour. Beep, 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 yay, yeah. okay. Alright, we got three days to get to the middle of that castle. Thank you. 
came. Did I not bring my AUG? What did I do? Oh, I put on my armor and I didn't put on my... Oh no, what happens if they're in the... Oh no! What happens if I leave them in the locker and walk away? I hope I just didn't delete my weapons. <laughs> I I almost had a heart attack there. <laughs> oh. So again, this is why this dev team rules is they thought of that. They they thought of that. They coded in a solution. Like, let's make sure that people don't delete their weapons when they leave them in a place that is, uh... Like, persistence. Persistence of, uh, time. It, it all... Everything continues to exist. Even though... You're not directly looking at it. Always used to be a slider in here. They seem to have <coughs> changed that spawn point. Launched yourself. There's a slider. 
come over in the train yard. Ideally, we'll just walk right past him. Hard to spot him. Snag all the extra food stuffs. Bogging myself down with extra weight. Ooh, but free heels are free. I might end up needing a little love. Uh, and oh, there's. Okay, hold on, hold on. Alright, I'm breaking my rule. Explorers, this year marks the fifth anniversary of the event. The United Nations Pechorsk Special Committee, UNPSC, is aware that periodic memory loss is prevalent among the changed. Thus, we would like to supply you with an overview of the event that created the radius, as well as inform you about the results of your courageous work within the Pechorsk Exclusion Zone. Five years ago, in 1987, the diamond mine just outside the town of Pechorsk was struck by an asteroid consisting of highly radioactive material. There was a spike in seismic activity and all communications with the town ceased. The area around the mine was covered in dense fog and the entire region around Pechorsk was contaminated by radioactive debris. International rescue efforts were unsuccessful and ended in tragedy with all rescue workers who entered what would become the Pechorsk exclusion zone dying from radiation exposure. The helicopter sent for a flyover disappeared without a trace. Satellite imagery came back distorted. The knows. area was then cordoned off to prevent further loss of life. It was originally thought that there were no survivors. Eventually, we learned that there were survivors within the exclusion zone, but their biology had been altered, changed in such a manner that they could not survive outside it. Over the past five years, one of the UNPSC's primary research objectives has been finding a way to help the changed return to normal life outside the zone. Sadly, we have yet to find a cure. However, with your assistance, we have been able to contribute to advances in other fields. Two Nobel Prizes have been awarded to physicists whose findings now. rest largely on the study of artifacts collected from the radius. And your work has resulted in many more achievements across disciplines, especially in the field of communication. Really 
Thank you for making these achievements possible. The UNPSC will continue working tirelessly to help you and to ensure that your efforts on behalf of humanity within the exclusion zone are not in vain. If it's not immediately useful, we can kind of leave it behind. But leave it in a place that's easy to access. real quick. I'm gonna... Not that. Not that. There we go. Hit the washroom real fast. We'll be right back. It is. <laughs> like I was saying, you know, I started noticing a lot of gray hair in my beard when I <laughs> played through it the first time. It is a stressful game. They've done, a, they've done an amazing job of, like, figuring out how to apply pressure with like just audio even like when you go into that um construction zone in Boloki and you hear enemies all over the place and you know that they are mimics because you can hear their boots and you can hear them talking and you know that like there's multiple of them and there's anomalies and there's you know a respawn thing and they're all on different floors and then they throw in a couple of those little, like, burned husks of, you know, ex of residents that are left behind. Uh, just to make it so that, like, when you come around a corner in the dark, you see that. You think that that's an anomaly, or that's a mimic. You know, just, like, they've done such a good job of, like, creating extremely stressful situations that you have to like work your way through um, and the fact that they did that with audio I feel is like a very profoundly cool um, just game design
Because even though you can't see them, you know they're there. You know they're hunting you. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have two flashlights in my pocket. Plus my chest flashlight so I can go in with as much lighting as possible and not block off all of my lighting when I'm ADS'd. Is Max coming out to play? Assuming right, the next incident will take place in the castle. Ah, uh, the door is blocked. How does it? Or maybe I just leave it alone. Yo, oh, you're gonna make it. Durability on this AUG is gonna burn up quick.
There used to be a world spawn Saigo over there. There's way fewer enemies in here than there used to be. Yeah, Saiga Mags. of light down the corridor so I went in but now it's all black. I'm scared to move on. I hear something moving in the dark. go here. I'm not safe. Seems safe.
good stuff in there. <laughs> That's one of those mags. That is for a, um, it's an AUG. I don't need another AUG mag. One of those is for a SCAR. The other one, I think, is for a, um, one of those bolt action suppressed rifles. Is he just in here? I think he's just behind this. Yeah. You push. of the journey complete. this point on, I no longer need flashlights. Except for maybe when I get back into the main castle. Oh! 
Oh, you cheeky. are available if I come back after a map reset or something. But I don't think I'm gonna. strange ray of light that came out of nowhere as if it was in a dream. It led me up here. Just one look down makes me dizzy. That haze, what is it? Just about to say, I'm getting into slider territory. the heels. Thank you. 
Seen better days. Oh, God, there's two of them now. My gun just like fully jammed up on me. There we went. There we go. This is rough. How you doing, Augie? Not looking so hot.
I know before there was a world spawn gone up here, which might be handy to have if Vita. is how confident am I that I'm going to be able to take the keep with that beat up of an og. It's not an ideal situation, but good part is, is if I do get downed, I can come back with the tiger rifle. I'm almost to the end. Like, I'm real close to the end. That was fun. Something like that.
one run over there. I broke my mat. I broke my silencer. I think. Yep, suppressor broken. I guess it's not gone, but it's loud now. Like I can repair it probably in the shop. like 10 in the time it took him to respawn one, so I'm okay with that. Oop, 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 oop. Ah. Alright. Let's go get my tiger rifle. Come on back. We'll need a gas. Oh, where'd you come from, Mr. Sneak Around Behind You? What are you doing, you sneaky guy? Okay. So I'm gonna need a gas mask. I'm gonna go ahead and just treat myself to another body armor and helmet because I've got the money
Which one of these go with the Glock, I guess? Well, there's all the rest of my tiger rifle mags. Um, we'll need one of these and one of those. Probes, clicker, I think might come in handy. Right now we're on less of a reclaim the body mission and more of a punch our way through to the end mission. Because we're close. We're really close. Am I missing anything? Mags, sidearm, meds, food, bullets, lights, machete. And everything's in good condition. That's gonna be important. still gonna get the AUG, put it on my backpack, try to reclaim as much of that gear as possible, but priority is punch, punch through, because all we gotta do is get up the stairs, get through that courtyard, get up the stairs.
wonder if I'll be able to... Oh, I probably won't be able to carry it all. But I'm, I'm wondering if I can maybe attach that body armor into my backpack so that I can carry it out with me. spread of treats. I suppose I, I could have gone back. I was trying, I was kind of being lazy. I could have turned back and like picked everything back up and sold it all and Long rifle's a little bit hard for this QCB stuff. This is why I wanted to take the AUG instead of my Tiger. See how narrow that path is? I can step on like these, this line of bricks without dying.
Now there shouldn't be anything enabling a respawn, but I'm just gonna be a little extra cautious anyway, because I don't want to just run in blind and get myself, oh come on now. No, 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 no. That almost got me. Stupid grass almost killed me. <laughs> these guys may have respawned, so we can be a little bit cautious. So we're getting to where there, there was a rift in the courtyard. Soda? Soda's generally not worth carrying. Coughs, 
you, whoever you are, thanks for leading me out again. Wait, what's that light up there? I thought the castle was closed. Doing some like three stooges stuff there. I can put it in there. It's just gone, it would appear. Okay, 
So that seems to be the <laughs> the movement pattern for that little spot. Okay, I think there's still one up in that corner. Like an unarmored one. I hear one up here too. Maybe first things first, we deal with this, and then we come back for the heavy stuff. I am a little choked about my AUG. Still more footsteps, but they can't respawn. So we're doing good. though. Where, where the AUG at though? That is a huge bummer. Because that's a lot of good gear. Oh, there it is! This I can do without. Leave that behind. 
I'd really rather not leave this behind. Um, it's 28. I'd like to have the helmet, because that's 12. I'd like to have the body armor, because that's like 4,000. Uh, the rest of this... Is, is whatever, man. Well, the documents are valuable, but are they two pounds valuable? I don't know. Hope so. Well, corpse of myself, um, it was a fun ride. Uh, Maybe we'll meet again <laughs> in another life. Sounds like there's way more enemies above than there used to be, so I'm gonna- Ooh, 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 hey, no, no thank you. He came out to say hello. far fewer lullabies than I was a minute ago, so that's always nice. This is dead weight. where the light came from? Ah. What's this? You impressed us, Explorer number 61. You made it. All went according to the plan. What? What's that voice? So, what is it like being a hero, a savior, the a chosen monster. one, or the destroyer? It was you who invoked the event, didn't you? Who are you? What is this place? Was it your plan? No, you did not. 
Are you upset? You could never be the one, because there is no you. You are a mere echo of many people, an illusion, a composite image. Your dear Katya never existed, too. What are you saying? I am real! Please, don't listen to it! She is your personal motivator that led you to the center, the castle, me. Congratulations! You made it here. Iteration successful. I am satisfied. Should I reward you? Take this gun and make your choice. Kill her and you will be free to live an ordinary life outside the radius. No, please. I'm... I'm so sorry I brought you here. I didn't know any of this until now. Kill me and I will give her a human form. She will live. All her memories will come true. But you will vanish. Choose your reward, Explorer number 61. I... I don't think we can trust it, about letting you go. But please, I'd rather die than stay trapped in here forever. If neither of us is real anyway, we can't die for real. Don't be afraid to shoot. You can stop it all right now. What will it be, Explorer number 61? Do you want a name, a home, a future? Or are you going to play the hero and the sacrifice? You must understand that you can't harm the Radius. The work in progress here will continue. Well, what you need to understand is I love the Radius. <laughs> I'm going nowhere. All the necessary I data has been reported. Are you alright? What? What's happening to me? After he made his choice, something happened to me. After he made his choice, you're gonna read it for something me. Something happened That's to me. It's nice too. <laughs> I felt myself separating from the being I'd only just realized I was a part of. It said to me. Although, no, it didn't speak. We were still connected. It let me know through impulses sent directly into my neural networks. An act of self-sacrifice has just been performed, and you are to be its beneficiary. Then I was overcome with vertigo and blacked out. When I came to, I was standing in a field. It was speckled with wildflowers that were brighter than anything I'd ever seen before. Blades of grass tickled my ankles as a warm summer breeze blew through the field. A girl of eight or nine grabbed my hand. Katya, come on. Mama and Papa are waiting. Go, go, I'll be there in a moment, I said, squeezing her hand before releasing it. She threw me an over-serious look. That look children sometimes get when they're trying to prove they're really <laughs> already adults. Then she shrugged and ran off. I spread out on the grass, face turned up to the sky. A single airplane traced a contrail across the boundless blue. Explorer number 61, wherever you are, even if you are only in my mind now, Thank you. You got Thank it. Thank you. No sweat. I'm gonna go back to my bunker. Polish up my guns. Have myself a nice little dog food snack. Two armors. 
this even fixable? I'll have to just throw it in the thing anyway. Now ah, let's just throw everything in the thing. I got so much money now. No delivery? Okay. Let's repair stuff then. Two whole helmets, two whole gas masks. thousand dollars worth of repairs <laughs> well I had 20,000 my last mission got a little expensive <laughs> I got two helmets, two body armors. guys. So what's this for then? Do I sell it? Do I keep it? If this isn't a... If I don't return it for 7,000... Oh no, I sell it for 7,000. Do I keep it as a trophy? Because money is meaningless. Keep it as a trophy, at least for now. If I come back and like decide to get weird with some weaponry, I know where I can find a little something, something. Oh, we made it. We made it. Throw that right there. Well, as usual, it's kind of hard to say goodbye to the radius. Uh, I do, as always, just 
like being here. <laughs> so, you know, it's always kind of just like a, well, oh, it's over. Okay. <laughs> We got our butts handed to us on that last little bit, though. But like I said, it, you know, it was less of a rescue mission for the for the gear than it was just a punch through to the end, because I knew I was like moments away from finishing. So. Still have my sweet, sweet little schnippler. <laughs> Active mission is not confirmed. Blah, 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 blah. What more missions do you want me to do? I, I got nothing. Come on. Go kill some stuff. Oh, wait, I can go. I can go grab all the. I can go grab my little uh, care package that I left myself. Oh. Okay, so I guess that's a radius reset that I was not aware of. That's fine too. Every single time. <laughs> Come 
Come here. Come here. Come here. You stuck? Where'd their Schlader friend go? <laughs> oh, it feels good every single time! <laughs> Boink! Dead. Hear him. There you are. Come on. Where are you, Schleider friend? I just make noise. You want to come after me? There you are. Did you find me? Did you find me? Oh, that felt good. <laughs> All right. Now I can say it's game over. Yeah, it's fine. I'm fine with that. Oh yeah, that felt good. <laughs> the dinner bell. Come and get it. Come and get it. <laughs> mm. Tune up that suppressor ever so slightly. I like to leave things 
in pristine condition because I tend to get a little impatient when I start playing, even though I'm probably not going to come back to this game save anytime soon because I've got so many games I need to play. But it always feels good to just know that everything's all spruced up. <sighs> All right. Well, I guess it's time, right? Like, nope. that we've been trying to get for the longest time and it opened up the ability to do the castle we burned through the castle but not without dying we've chosen our destiny we live in the radius now we'll be here forever and ever more but that's okay I still have all of my weapons Extra armor And the ability to one-tap a slider In the head Like a chomp And it feels good <laughs> <laughs> well that's into the radius guys we did it uh, it's been a long grind through it Iron Man mode complete score it I uh, that means I get a steam achievement so yeah <laughs> oh, 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 let's see what percentage of people get that Steam achievement. Hold on. I need to find out. I need to know. Uh, top three games to play in VR. I mean, obviously, Pop 1. You gotta get that one. If you're on Oculus, that's free. Um, if you are... On PC VR, I honestly think Vertigo 2 is spectacular. Um, it's, uh, I would say, the closest thing um, gameplay-wise, game like like g play style-wise that VR has to like an Elden Ring kind of game where dodge rolling out of the way of giant bosses that are gonna one tap you is like critical to actually being able to play the game um, but it's also just like an amazing game for visuals, an amazing game for story um, super funny it's like, it's like a romp through a Pixar movie kind of feel 
and it was all made by one dude um, who, you know, he, he had a lot of help from, um, like, Valve developers. I think he got hired by Valve and, like, you know, was able to, like, kind of bounce ideas off of um, a bunch of developers. Like, after he made the first game, uh, as a, like, 17-year-old in his, you know, like, made the first game in his bedroom like an absolute prodigy, he came back and like made this one look, you know, I believe it was six, seven years after the release of the first one. So it took him seven years to, to make it all by himself. And it's one of the best VR games out there. It's awesome. Um, and then, yeah, Into the Radius. If you haven't played it, you should play it. You, like, everybody should. Like, this game is the standard by which all other. Um, VR games, like especially shooter games, should be measured. Um, it is really good. Um, the development team that created this clearly loves their game and has put in an immense amount of effort to make it into something absolutely spectacular. Um, the, the tactile nature of it, the gameplay um, loop of it, um, it just sucks you in, and it's it's just too good. So I I highly recommend Into the Radius for anybody that um, is looking for something. There is a quest version of it. It's obviously not going to be quite as like visually stunning as the PC version, um, but the entire game is um, playable through just quest standalone. So. Everybody has access to it. Um, it's just, it's a spectacular game. Um, I, I love this game. Um, and the fact that I just beat it on Iron Man mode makes me very happy and full of accomplished feelings. Um, yeah. <laughs> Let me cool up. Pop one is difficult. Um, yeah, I mean the the skill floor on Pop one is is constantly raising and has been for the last two years. So I mean it's it's not gonna get any easier unless I guess you know the way that you make it easier is by pushing your boundaries and um, you know seeing what you like putting yourself in uncomfortable positions and seeing if you can get yourself out of them. Um, is really the, the best way to like develop your skills in pop. I know it, it, it can feel very intimidating to like go up against a bunch of people who've been playing for you know almost three years now who've got like moves super dialed in and everything. And like you know when we when we started, you know there were dominant players and and less dominant players and you know it, it it just like the best advice anybody ever gave me was just to like chase down the fights and you know get into get into battles and just try to win them um you know i came from playing pubg all the time and like i was terrible at pubg and it was also be that was also because i was like I would spend most of the time like hiding in bushes and crawling around and like never really like taking on the fights and like if you don't teach yourself how to shoot the guns and land your hits and you know keep a cool head under pressure and move and like you know reload quickly and like there's all these little things that that you learn by doing um, that you aren't teaching yourself if you're, if you're stealthing around and, and, you know, avoiding conflicts. Um, but if you get in there and you, and you 
embrace it and just go after the fight, you'll get so quick, so fast. Um, yeah, you gotta, yeah, mastering the recoil patterns. There's like all these little things, you know, like even just movement mechanics stuff. Like if you can outmaneuver, like say you land in castle, like if you hot drop into castle and you're, you know, flying in and out of the windows and, um, you know, figuring out how to, like, confuse your enemies, like, you're learning how to, like, really, like, outplay other people. And that's, and those are skills that you're not, that you're not learning if you're, you know, if you're being stealthy and, like, and, like, avoiding the fight. Um, and like, you know, the, if I can give the best advice possible is just like, be fine with failing. Like it's, it's okay. Like the only thing that's going to happen is you're going to press restart and try it again. Um, but you know, if you, if you just accept the fact that like, you know, failure is just going to happen. That's inevitable. I, you know, I play pretty well. I'm definitely not like super turny comp level player, but I do all right, and I fail all the time, and you know, like, I just try to remember that, like, oh, okay, like, you know, there's other people out there that are really good, and like, if nothing else, I can be respectful of their of their skill and just be like, you know, high five, man, like that was awesome, like that was a great fight. Um, and in that way, like, not only is that just, like, makes it so that, like, I'm not beating myself up when I lose, um, it's a great way to, like, gain friends in the game. Like, that's how I made friends with GSI, was, you know, we were just constant, like, both of us were always hot dropping, and we, you know, we, we got familiar with, like, oh yeah, I you know, you kill me a lot, both of us, like, back and forth, like, I kill you, you kill me, like, I, I respect you, like, the, like, you're always in it, you're always just, like, ready for that fight, and, you know, we just met in a lobby one time, we're like, I know you, I know you, you're really good, <laughs> and fist bumped, and we started playing together, and we've been playing together ever since, and, like, you know, it's, so it's, a good way to like meet other people that are going to push themselves it's a it's a good way to like you know if you're not beating yourself up over it you're not like taking it so seriously that you know you're you're shutting yourself off from taking those risks um and then yeah you're gonna you're gonna meet a lot more people that are you know going to be able to like back you up while you're pushing yourself and while you're leveling up your game um so i mean like you know hopefully that kind of helps and like gives you some encouragement you know we none of us started out as as amazing players it all just kind of like comes with time and like if you go and watch some of my old stuff like when I watch my old videos now, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I used to move so slow. Um, I used to, you know, take so much time to do stuff that, like, I was missing my shots constantly, like, and, like, you know, with, with the way that I've, like, learned how to kind of optimize what I do over time, it's, um, it, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't feel like the same kind of game anymore. Like it, like I, I look at my old gameplay and I'm just like, man, I, I've, I've learned a lot. <laughs> I used to be pretty terrible, um, but yeah, like we all, like you learn by doing, and the more you do, the more you learn. So yeah, 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 yeah. and yeah, like it. If we're, if we're all just kind of like allowing each other to, you know, 
to make mistakes and learn and grow and, you know, just enjoy the game for the game. Like, we're also building a really cool community that is fun to be a part of. Um, and yeah, like, that's kind of the goal of, of, I mean, that's something to aspire to, at least, with, with, you know, online gaming, is just like, yo, we're all people that are into the same thing, like, can we enjoy each other's company, you know? I know, like, a lot of PvP gaming gets, like, really bogged down in the like just kind of like dumb hostile stuff where you know like oh i owned you uh, like, it um it, it does actually kind of shut down the the potential for the game to like be a fun place for people to enjoy um pop one's done a really good job of like avoiding that kind of loop um they've like the the developers have, have put in a lot of effort in you know moderating the game so that the people who are you know there because they're compelled to abuse others um you know when they get spotted and called out they, they kind of get shown the door um for the most part there's still kind of low-level um, hostile stuff that happens um, just like you know you, you just can't get away from that in PvP gaming unfortunately it seems because uh, it's so like integrated into the culture of, um, of online player versus player um, even though it's pointless and you know just kind of dumb but uh, yeah, like there's some there's some very cool community stuff going on with with Pop One that uh, you know I I really respect the dev team for um, for making the intentional choice to like cultivate that instead of just kind of defaulting to the kind of blasé toxic norms of you know what the gaming culture has set as the standard previously. Um, yeah, it's hard to push back on that, and they've 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 really risen to that occasion. So, I I really appreciate um, Big Box for everything that they've done in that regard. Oh, I'm gonna stop talking about Pop One though. I'm gonna um, take a little bit of a break here. Maybe do a little bit of video editing, something. I know. Um, Jill, Rustic, and Dread, and I are going to uh, do some back rooms. Yeah, um, it's it'll be interesting to see. So you know, the, with the integration of free to play, it you know there's there's there has been a big influx of you know new energy and that has actually like really shifted the culture a lot um it was way less hostile and way less toxic before free to play um and with free to play like you know just anybody that can spoof an account or you know make a new face like you know it, it's it's harder for it's harder for big box to actually police and um, and get rid of toxic players because somebody can just make a new account, sign up again for free, get right back into the game. Like no uh, no no cost even. Like no like they don't have to pay twenty bucks again. They can just hop right back in. Um, so it actually opens up a lot more um, hostile, like, you know, the, the people who are there to be toxic have way less of a, of a resistance to their participation. 
Um, you know, at least there's no financial incentive for them to knock it off. Um, so, yeah. And just, I don't know. I don't know if it's... Like it, you know, like I said, the, the, the super hostile stuff just kind of like is so normalized in the gaming culture as, as kind of like, it's like a fish doesn't realize that they're in water kind of thing. Um, most game, a lot of gamers don't realize that like the, the behaviors that they engage in are, um, not really welcome <laughs> to a lot of people and they don't really realize like how much that shuts off participation in the games that they play um like you know way more people would be into playing way more games if they could show up and just enjoy the game and not have some brat screaming racial slurs at them. Um, you know, like there's, there's, if the communities are hostile, they cultivate hostile communities. Like it is a, it is a cyclical sort of, um, like a self-fulfilling prophecy. And like, it does actually damage the reputation of online gaming, and it, you know, shuts a lot of people out from online gaming. Like it, like there's, if, if you have a bunch of hostile people, the only people who want to be around them are people who are, you know, hostile themselves or just think that that's normal. And most of the world doesn't. <laughs> like, most of the world aren't, you know, super entitled knobs. Yeah, exactly. Small groups ruin it for, for larger groups. Um, and it tends to be that the small groups are the most outspoken, because, you know, the, like, nobody's, nobody's, nobody needs to be outspoken about, like, or I guess, you know, some people need to be somewhat outspoken about being, you know, just decent to one another, but it tends to be that, you know, the, the most vocal and the most, you know, uh, aggressive with their opinions about, you know, how gaming should be are the people who are hostile and mean-spirited and it, uh, like, you know, if you, if you try to counter their argument, they get way more aggressive about it. Um, and yeah, it's like, how do you, how do you fight back against people who are like fixated on being obnoxious like well I guess the only way you can is to just ignore them but that also gives them the opportunity to just continue being obnoxious to other people um, so it's yeah it's weird there, there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, nuance to that whole conversation. So thank you for coming to my TED talk. Uh, <laughs> like I was saying, uh, we'll be back on a little bit later with Rustic, Jill, and Dread. We're gonna try to finish Escape the Backrooms tonight. I think we're really close to the end of that one too, so hopefully we get that like completed and, uh, and get all that video in the bag. I'm not really making episodes of that because I end up dying way too much. So I, I like end up having to scrape everybody else's streams constantly for for footage. So I'm just gonna kind of like 
you know, given up on uh, making content for it. And I'm just going to say, like, Jill is the hero of that story. And, uh, and I'm just here to be cannon fodder so that she can help, like, to help figure out puzzles so that she can live through it and, and get the win. Because uh, she's doing awesome with those, with those video series. Um, thank you, Steven. I will definitely keep on keeping on, keep on grinding it, and uh, yeah, um, with any luck we'll uh, actually help make a cooler, brighter future for VR, and um, yeah, keep on showing that games can be f just played for fun instead of or like that the games themselves are actually fun and we don't actually need to like turn it into an exercise of um, being obnoxious for our own entertainment um, yeah. but uh, yeah escape the back rooms a little bit later we'll see if uh, if uh, we get through all that thank you rustic we'll see you in a little bit as well. It's like two hours ish. Jill gets home, so we'll hop on there. And um, yeah, hopefully you guys had a good time. I definitely did. As always, this game it just holds such a such a magical spot for me in my own heart. Um, so I'm glad I was able to grind on through it and. Uh, get all the way to the end of Iron Man that uh, there were a couple of hairball spots there <laughs> I didn't know if we were going to make it all the way to the end but we did it we made it and uh, yeah feels good uh, next uh, next several weeks will be far less stressful now <laughs> oh boy but Hope you guys had a good time. I definitely did. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. Peace out, everybody.